this uh, Paula Fresh.
Sing us out this morning, the splendor of the King. The splendor of the King. Clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. All the earth rejoice. You see, wraps himself.
as we continue to worship this morning, I just pray that we just lay it all out before Jesus this morning. Pray that we take all our troubles, all our pain. We just lay it at the cross this morning. Let his, his grace, his love, his forgiveness fall upon us this morning.
Sat together, you are here. I 
You're working, but you're never going to stop working. the lover of our soul. Yes. 
He's the way maker. When there's no way, he makes a way. When the Israelites came to the river, the Red Sea, with the enemy on their tail, he made a way. He parted the Red Sea for them. How much more for us? Whatever it is you're going through, he's the way maker. Trust him. You can trust Jesus. Amen? You can trust him. No matter what it is, you can trust him. Put all of your trust in him, and you won't be disappointed. You won't be disappointed. Amen? Well, let's go ahead and we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing in our midst. Thank you that what you're doing in our families, our homes, our lives. We thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing in our worship as we humble ourselves before you. Thank you for what you're doing in our nation. Lord, that, that we can have a, a turn back to you, Lord, that righteousness would be restored and you would cause this nation to be great again. Thank you, Lord, for all these things, Lord, that you're doing in our midst and in our life. Help us to be the lights you've called us to be. Father, as we transition into our offering, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that you say you love a cheerful giver, so we're going to be cheerful. We're going we're gonna to be glad, and we're going to rejoice, because you said you would give good measure, pressed down, shaken over back to us, Lord. And as we give, you give back, Lord. It's just your nature, and so we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you that we hear your voice very clearly in Jesus' name. Amen. against you. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Everywhere we go, that God is with us. And he's for us, not against us. He has a plan for each of our lives. And you know what? It's good. It's very good. His plan for your life. It's good. We just need to not try to figure it out on our own and do our own thing and say, Lord, guide my steps into the goodness that you have for me. Amen? Wow. Thank you, Lord. Well, we glorify the King. We thank you for our worship team that helps us to enter into the presence of God, the gifts and talents that he's given each of you. I pray that. I pray that he increases it a hundredfold and you take it even to new levels, even beyond what you can even imagine or think in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Well, we're going to declare and decree. 
God's goodness in his word. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we have the ability to understand and to hear and to just grow in the grace that you have for us, Lord, of your word. I declare and decree that every hearer of this message of your word, Lord, that goes forth, that it goes as seed into the soils of their heart, Lord, and will produce a bumper crop in each of their lives and that they would be not just a light, but a very, very, very bright light into this world and to their family and beyond, Lord, in Jesus' name. Don't have a long message today. Just good. we have some other stuff we're going to be doing when we bring up our associate pastors and hear a little bit of their, their uh, trip and then pray over them. <laughs> But last week I went over, you know, the word of life in 1 John. I'm kind of rolling off of that today. I didn't really go into the walk in the light because actually Pastor Juan did a really good message on walking in the light a couple weeks back. And so I didn't feel the need to reiterate that because it was a good message. If you missed it, go back. So we're going to pick up our text in 1 John 1.8. And we're going to read four verses, and then we're going to kind of break it down. So in 1 John, the first epistle or the first letter, however you would want to say it, of John, in verse 8, it says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and the words or his words are not in us. Verse 2 or chapter 2, verse 1 my little children, these things I write unto you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. God didn't just come for you or for me, but he came for everybody, right? He went to the cross of Calvary, and all of us were on his mind and on his heart when he was there, when he endured the suffering and went to the cross, and he bore our sins. Not only did he bear the sins and the penalty of the sin, but he broke the power of sin to continue, right? It's no longer something that we have to deal with. Now, we're not saying that we don't sin. That's what the author's saying here, right? Because sin is basically this, is a transgression or an overstepping of the law. It's the divine boundary that's between good and evil. Look at Psalm 51.1. And we'll see something right there. And it's like, how do we deal with sin? That's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. How do we deal with it? Psalm 51, verse 1 says this Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions or blot out my sins, blot out the things that I do that keep us separated, right? So it's like sin is something that will cause us to be separated from the love of the Father. It will cause us to be separated. Well, let me back up. Not necessarily the love of the Father because God is love and he always loves us no matter what state we're in. So that would not be a correct statement. But what it is is that it separates us from that koinonia or the fellowship, the intimate fellowship we can have with God. Because in Genesis 1, it says that when they were in the innocence, before, mind you, that they sinned, 
because they could not keep one commandment. Don't eat from this one tree. That was the only rule they had, and they couldn't keep that. But before that, it says that God would come down in the cool of the day, and he would walk with Adam and Eve, and they would have fellowship, right? Basically, God was coming down and loving on his people, like what we try to do when we worship and get into that place. Lord, come and love on us. And let us love on you. Let it be a mutual just affection one towards another, right? And so that's what it was that they did. Well, then they got separated from him because they couldn't keep the one rule in the garden, which was don't eat from this one tree. And then so along, you know, we fast forward and along comes God has to destroy the world because Noah and all that, during his generation, everything was wicked and evil, and it was like crazy, and God says, man, ain't no end to this. Oh, my. Everything got flooded, and, uh, but Noah found grace, right? Noah found grace, him and his family. Eight souls came out of the flood, eight being the number of new beginnings or new things. God says, I'm going to do something new right and so then they began to populate the earth again and then along comes a man named abraham and abraham who was called abram before became abraham and he says i'm going to make you the father of nations i'm going to make you the father and we did a series a while back on the sons of god and what that means i think i spent seven or eight weeks in that if you didn't catch it, go back to the YouTube channel and pull it up. There's a lot of good uh, nuggets in there and good truths that you can grab a hold of, such as we possess the gates of our enemies and we do all these things, right? That we're king's kids. We're part of the family. We were grafted in as the wild olive branch, some of us, unless you're Israeli and then you were, you're the natural branch. But God said, I'm going to bless them all. But here's my commandments. Here's 12 of them, or 10, I mean. Here's 10 commandments, right? Well, gosh, man, we couldn't even keep one in the garden. Now we got 10, right? But see, it said in there that in Hebrews, it said that the law, which is the 10 commandments, the law, was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. It was to teach us that, oh, wretched man that I am, Right? Who will deliver me from this body of sin? As Paul said. Oh, wretched man. It was to teach us that, hey, I don't know how to love you, God. You said at the beginning of this to love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and being, man, and have no other idols. I said, how do I do that? I said, I'm bent on going the wrong way. I'm bent on, I'm bent on worshiping my car or worshiping a sports team or worshiping this or whatever. Anything that's tangible I can feel, Right? And I can't feel you, Lord. I can't, I can't see you. Can't, how, how do I do that, right? And so in his grace, he does what? Every now and then we'll be in worship and we get to feel the tangible presence of God. So we know that he's real. We begin to experience him and we can walk into that. But how do we get there? Because we have to deal with sin. Sin separates us, right? Right? So it, it's not a good thing because that keeps us distant from him. Because he's what? He's a holy God. And he doesn't like dwelling with unrighteousness. He wants righteousness. But we can't do it ourselves because what did Isaiah say? Our, our, our righteousness is as filthy rags, right? We, we can't do it. We don't have the ability. And, but he said, though, though our sin be as what? As crimson or whatever, that the blood of Christ cleanses us. And we become white as wool. So it tells me dealing with sin, we have to go to the way of the cross and we have to go to Christ. It's the only way to deal with it. We can't deal with it ourselves. We can't pay the penalty. See, sin may be summarized in three different ways. It, it's an act, a violation or a want of obedience to the revealed will of God. This is the revealed will of God his word sometimes when we're in prayer or or if we're in a quiet time and we're just kind of thinking about things of the kingdom of god he'll reveal something to us and it's the revealed will of god hey i would rather you not do that right 
And so what do we do? I mean, I'm guilty. Sometimes I just kind of ignore that little prompting and just keep doing what I'm doing, right? Well, that's sin. I just have created a barrier between me and God. So now I have to say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, and help me. Help me not to do that. Help me to walk with you. Help me to be quick to obey when you do that so that I am obedient to your revealed will so that I don't, like, just kind of brush you off because I'm so caught up in what I'm doing that I feel it's more important than you are, right? So that's one of the ways that we have to deal with it in our own lives because we all have that tendency. You know, I'm, I'm just busy, man. I'm, I'm busy right now. Don't bother me, right? But God's always there. He's always with us because he lives inside, and he wants to be very much a part of what we do. So then the other thing that sin is can be summarized. It's a state. And what state is that? It's an absence of righteousness. It's a state of not being righteous. And the only way we can be righteous is in Christ. We have to have Christ. We have to have him and him alone. We have to have his word abiding in us and us abiding in him, right? And it doesn't matter how much of the word that you have abiding at the point, but you have to start somewhere and begin to abide, right? And abiding is an interesting thing because if you think about it, if you walk through any orchard, say you're walking through a bunch of peach trees and there are all these trees there, and you walk through, do you hear the branches like just going, oh, I got to produce fruit. I got to produce fruit. Oh, how can I produce fruit, right? Do they do that? Or do they just abide in the tree and draw the nourishment from the, the soil and the water and the stuff that comes up through the branches and then the fruit just starts to show up, right? So that's abiding. In other words, I trust you, Lord. I trust you and, and I trust your word that you have my best in, intention in mind, that you're looking to me to just abide and trust you. And you're going to bring the nourishment and the growth in my life that I'll start to produce the fruits of the Spirit in my life. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, goodness, all the things that go with the Spirit, the fruit, and it will begin to manifest out of your life and people will look at you and go, there's something different about you, right? Because I've had that happen, but not all the time. Sometimes I digress, right? And then people don't see that stuff in me anymore. But it can be in there, and, and how we deal with sin is we have to humble ourselves and go to them and say, Lord, forgive me for not obeying your revealed will, Forgive me for not trusting you, Jesus, right? I want to trust you so that I can abide in you and you can guide my steps. The third thing is it's a nature. Sin is a nature, right? And what's its nature? Enmity with God. It is an enemy of God, an enemy of the kingdom of God. That's what sin is. It was an enemy. It's still an enemy but Christ dealt with it on the cross. He completely destroyed it. He marched it around and said, it's been paid, it's done. It is finished. That's what he said, right? It's finished. It's no more to have control over you. It's lying at the door, but it can't come in unless you let it in. It can't come in if you just keep running to Father, Abba, right? You run to him, say, Lord, this thing keeps bothering me. I said, it's the sin that it so easily besets me. I need help. It won't let go. But I know you've defeated it, so how come it won't just disappear from my life, right? But you just keep going. You run your race. Because eventually, we finish it and we get that new body that doesn't have these problems. But the flesh we have now has these problems. And so how do we deal with it? We humble ourselves and we go to the king. 
So, when he says there, and just to elaborate a little on these scriptures, and I'm going to be kind of getting towards closing because we got uh, our times kind of running. In verse 1 of chapter 2, it says, These things I write to you so that you may not sin, or in the old King James, or in the King James Version, the original, not the new King James, which I read from, it says that you sin not. So that you sin not is kind of like a purpose. There's a purpose to that and a demand of the gospel. That's what it is. Because if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we'll have fellowship with one another, as as came out in the message a couple weeks ago. That's not just fellowship with one another, but fellowship with him, if we walk in the light and not in the darkness. But the, the light has come to dispel the darkness, which is Christ. So we have to have Christ, and we would sin not. Now, in verse 1, it also says something in there that he's an advocate, right? Christ is our advocate. So what's that mean, being an advocate? Right? So here's, I'm going to break it down. There's three things that that's to believers. One is, is a, it's a word called the parakletos or the, the, the helper, right? Christ is our helper. He's our advocate. You see, the Holy Spirit or the Spirit of Christ that he said, hey, it's expedient for you that I go away and go to heaven because I'm going to send you a helper. I'm going to send you the paraclete. The paraclete that he sent was, we, we call him the Holy Spirit or, or we call him the, the Spirit of Christ, uh, the Spirit of God. He, he's all the same. It's that. So it's the Spirit of Christ he sent. So the Spirit of Christ is the paraclete that comes alongside us to help us. That word literally, it, it means one called to the side of another for help or counsel. So he comes to counsel us, right? Hey, you might not want to do that. Oh, I'm busy right now, Lord, right? Like I was talking about earlier. He's there to help us to walk into those things that he would have us walk in. So he pleads with us. He, he helps us. He guides us. He brings us revelation. He tells us things are true. Now Jesus, he's a paraclete as well. He is the paraclete, but he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. So how's he an advocate for us there? He's, he's constantly going to the Father on our behalf. He's interceding for us constantly, praying for us that our faith wouldn't fail, that we would continue in those things. And he's there to also be our advocate. Because when the accuser of the brethren comes before him and says, hey, I seen your son over there doing this or doing that. He's a tattletale. He'd be telling, right? But God already knows everything. He don't need to tell him, but he just likes to go tattletale. So he'd be telling him, I seen him doing this. Ha, 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 ha. Right? And then... Jesus, as the advocate, goes to the Father and says, well, Father, he, uh, he actually repented of that and has asked me to help him. And so then the Father goes, get out of here, man, stupid devil, trying to cause problems, right? But he's our advocate with the Father. The other thing he is to us, well, let me go back. The Britannica Dictionary says this, an advocate is one who pleads the cause of another, an intercessor, a defender, and a counselor. So the Holy Spirit, basically our helper on earth, but Christ is our helper in heaven, right? So that's how that works. He's also, it says in that verse, that he's the righteous one. And the Britannica Dictionary says righteous means this, conforming in disposition and conduct to a standard of right and justice i.e. upright, virtuous, blameless, morally right, equitable, right thinking. I saw that and I said, right thinking, right? 
So how can we have right thinking? We have to renew our mind with the washing of the water of the word. We have to get in and submerge ourselves with this to begin to twist our mentality towards the kingdom of heaven and away from the kingdoms of this world. We have to begin to think the way God thinks and not the way the world thinks. And it's, it's quite different, right, on how all that is. And so we need to have right thinking. We need to have the mind of Christ. The third thing, as uh, believers that Christ says to us, is it's a word called hilasmos. In other words, he's the atoning sacrifice for sins. All right? He is the propitiation, it says. And that is propitiation. He by whom, as by sacrifice, sin is atoned for. All right? The dictionary says this. To appease and dispose to kindness or favor one who was offended, reconciling them to make atonement for or offer propitiation. So who was offended? God's offended at sin. He don't like it because he's holy, right? But Christ became the atonement for that. He went to the cross for us. Amen? Isn't that good news? I mean, Christ, he did everything for us. And it's like, he says, come to me and I'll dwell with you, right? That's all he asks, is that we just believe he's who he says he is. Amen? And be obedient. And, and I know it's hard sometimes. Like I said, I'm caught up in my things, doing my stuff, and the Holy Spirit will come and say, hey, hey, and I'll say, not now, I'm busy. Right? Right? I mean, I'm sure some of you have been there too, right? Yeah, I mean, we do it. But I mean, and, and yeah, we kind of laugh. And, yeah, but I, he don't probably think it's funny, but it's like, but it's the truth. We, we do stuff like that. And so all we can do is say, Lord, forgive us. Help us not to do that, right? Help us to more abide in you, Lord Jesus. Help us to walk in the light more with you, Lord. That's also in this, this uh, book that John wrote, or letter, and all those things. Amen? Well, hopefully you got something out of that about how to deal with sin, right? Because we have to deal with, we have some part to play in this dealing process. It's just not all like we're going to just sit there and osmosis is going to just kind of work its miracle in our life. No, we, we, have to, we have to step out in faith and do things, right? And then it will happen. Amen. So, but at this time of the service, we're going to go ahead and uh, bring up uh, Juan and Patty. If I could have Dan and Pam's not here, but Dan, you can come up. Uh, Joe and Leslie, my wife, Pastor Mickey. Uh, they're getting ready to go on a, a mission trip somewhere. And so we're going to have to remember to keep them in prayer. We're going to pray over them right now as a body of believers to bless them out and pray for their protection and all that, right? They're going into areas. When you start to go out and bring the gospel to lost people into foreign lands, Sometimes you run into some crazy devil things, man, like in demonics that are out there because they don't want people to get set free. But the good news is, is God's all-powerful, and they're all putsy. You just can look at it like that. They're all putsy, and God's all-powerful. Amen? No? So I'm going to let Juan share a little bit about where they're going and what they're doing, and we're going to just pray for them and then bless them out. I want to thank our Father God for each and every one of you because it's you he's after. It's you he wants you to have his home seated in your heart for you to know him and get to do that. He's given us the opportunity to bring his gospel message, the good news to other people around the world. Sometimes people get stuck in their walk. And he's, sometimes we need help to get unstuck. Sometimes we get rooted in pride, spiritual pride. Like I have to earn the salvation instead of just abiding 
in what he taught today, just rest in the Lord, knowing that salvation. So today, there, our trip is going to be based on a lot of healing from those, from those things that have people stuck, from really getting to know the presence of the Lord. So we honor him in that, that he's opened the doors and the way to go and preach and minister. And uh, we just pray that many people get set free and, and are able to truly feel the love of God without having to work for it just being covered under the blood of Jesus that gives them that salvation, bringing that knowledge. And we're hoping that many people come, healings, and, and uh, people get set free. And whatever the Lord does, it's just him, him moving in it. We just want to lift up the name of his son, Jesus Christ, in, in any way he tells us to do it. I mean, did he have something to share, Patty? We're going to Mexico City. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, um, and uh, the Lord has uh, just blessed us uh, just to be able to go out there and uh, just uh, be alongside of... Uh, Actually, uh, four other pastors will be out there, and uh, it'll be a two-day conference, uh, Ecatepec, um, the two days, Friday, Saturday, and then um, from there, Sunday, we will be ministering at a sister's church in uh, Mexico City, so um, we're just excited to see what God's going to do uh, just in us, you know, because we get the, the privilege of being able to sit there, take notes, uh, come back with you know, um, just what the Lord shows us there in another country. But, um, you know, this is, I think, this will be our second time going into Mexico. Um, and it's been for ministry, so we're just excited um, to see what God's going to do out there. And um, and also, um, the other thing we're really happy about is we get to leave, you know, Senior, uh, you know, our, our helper here, um, Senior Raul, <laughs> Raul Senior, out here. And so I'm excited about that because... You know, that's where the body of Christ comes together. It's like we can leave and, and we know that the Spanish ministry is going to be blessed. They're still going to receive. Nothing, uh, you know, stops uh, that service from continuing. And uh, our brother Armando who brings a worship. So we're really excited to see that happen. Hopefully, you know, uh, one day they can join us. But uh, we're really excited to see that. And, and I'm, uh, you know, we're seeing that here with um, the English service as well is that you know, if Pastor Marshall and, and Tamsin have to uh, be sent out somewhere, there's going to be the body of Christ here still. It's going to still, we're still going to receive the word here. So that's exciting. I did want to also touch on something else the Lord is doing. Mexico City is one of the largest cities in the entire world. Also one of the most polluted cities physically, also spiritually. And so when you're bringing light into that dark world of spiritual contamination, there's going to be some stirring up. So we're actually going to be ministering at a pastor's conference. So these are people from all over the country coming to hear what the Lord has. And so there's going to be an anointing being released it's for them to take back to their congregations. So this will impact the whole country of Mexico, the light that's going to be shining on that meeting. So we thank God for it. Amen. We're going to believe that too. Amen. So let's go ahead and just pray for them. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for our brother and our sister here, our associate pastors at this fellowship, Lord. We ask that you would guide their steps, Lord, that you would hedge them in with protection, watch over them as they go, Lord. Grace their words with your grace and with the love of Christ that would go forth to break the yokes of bondage off the people's lives, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name. And uh, did anyone else have anything to add? That's part of the presbytery here praying. Heavenly Father, we ask you to watch over them because it's harder for us to go and to have somebody go for us and represent us from this church is just awesome, Lord. We thank you that Patty and Juan do that for us and, and uh, knowing that we're here and we're praying for them. So, Lord, each one of us should have a prayer for them while they're there to watch over them, Lord. It's a, like Pastor Marshall said, it's a very hard place to be in. In Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you. Uh, Lord, we know that the greatest sermon that's ever given was the one that's lived and they're living it right now. They're going to be going out, doing a work for you. Uh, it says, go and make followers of all people. I know they're not just going over there to receive, but they're going over there to labor. So I pray that your angels would go before them. You would pave the way for them. And God, we would see great miracles, and they would bring back testimonies of, you know, we know that Pastor Juan's called to lay hands on 
demon-possessed people and lives are changed and transformed. So I pray that his hands would be anointed in that area, that you would anoint him for, to lay hands, him and Sister Patty, on, that we would see people healing, the anointing of healing upon their lives, God. The Bible said that Jesus, when he told uh, Peter that, that uh, he was going to call him the rock and the, the, the gates of hell should not prevail, I know the place that they're going in right now, Lord, is a place where they do, there's a lot of evilness that's happening there, a lot of evil things. So I just pray, God, that the gates of hell should not prevail and that Jesus would be glorified. And I thank you for Pastor Juan and his wife, and I ask that your angels would just cover them, bless them, protect them, get them there safe, and get them back safe. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. So uh, at this point, I think the youth are coming up, and we're going to sing about the 10,000 reasons, right? Ten thousand reasons. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where's the rest of your crew? Where's the rest of your crew? Ah, oh, here's the singer. So, uh, yeah, we got a special, but um, person that they're going to be uh, not just the special, you know, we have plans on running a full service one day on a Wednesday, you know, and, uh, the youth service. And I want to invite all of you when that happens to come out to the youth service and they'll be leading the worship, running the whole service. That's our plan. That's our goal. That's what we believe that God wants to do. So um, it doesn't just have to be youth. We changed it from 13 to 40. And even if you're 50, 60, 70, it doesn't matter. Come on out. Come see what the youth are doing. They're, what it is is I challenge them in all areas of their life. You know, first of all, seeking God, prayer, fasting, reading the word. But I've also challenged them into answering their call. You know, answer the call that God has placed in your life. And, and they've been stepping up. They've been stepping out and stepping out. You know, and a lot of us... That's what we need to do. We need to step out in faith and just believe that, you know what, God's called us, God's chose us, and we're going to step into that calling that God has us because there's a destiny for them. And this is part of their destiny, to worship God and to lift them up and to praise them. And also, they're, they, it's a battleground. This is where the battle takes place. This is where the, we worship God and the battle begins to happen. So I'm very proud of them. And uh, it's a work in progress, but it's, it's, uh, it's a good thing, you know. And I'm very proud of them. We're set. Is he here? We're set. You gonna play? Father God, we just want to thank you for bringing us all here today, you know, giving us this confidence and boldness. Father God, we just, we just ask that you be in our hearts and, and fill it with, with joy so that we may praise you and worship you, Lord. We just ask you that you come into us. We're your vessel, Lord. You sing through us. We are here for you, Lord. We just want to praise you and worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. song. 
wrong again Never may he pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, oh my soul some vegetables and different stuff delivered this morning as well back there so if you need any of that or if your neighbor could use any please walk back there and clear that stuff out because we don't want to just go bad amen well father we thank you that you give us opportunities to be a light this next week lord help us to let our light shine and go forth into the workplaces into schools and wherever we go lord Knowing full well that you're with us, Lord, help us to be attentive to your prompting, Lord, and not be so busy that we can't pay attention to you, Lord, for you know what's best. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all be blessed.